wow, Trump week this week. We have a million things to talk about. Tim Apicella and me. Hi, Tim. Good morning, Jay. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Very important we do this work. But first, a moment of comic relief, you know, out of, out of Shakespeare, out of Hamlet. A moment of comic relief. Watch this. This is on the internet. And it celebrates Halloween. Well, there you have it. This is what people in general are starting to think. This is a perfect Halloween celebration. When's your birthday, Tim? I, I like to get you one. <laughs> Please don't, because you'll be out of office by then. It'll be passe. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that would be nice. So let's talk about this week. There's a lot of things happened this week. We are, you know, chock-a-block with things this week. I guess the, the first one is the one we ought to, you know, see as the most important thing not to be distracted from. And that is the impeachment. What's yeah. the status? Where are we going with this? Yeah. First off, do you expect me to speak on a serious note after that video? Really? <laughs> <Work> <laughs> really? <on> <laughs> well, you know, the, the, um, the impeachment process is moving along. Now, Donald Trump has, you know, trenched in saying, well, you haven't taken a formal vote uh, in the House, so therefore we don't have to cooperate. Now, wasn't that an interesting read on what's not required? So he's trying to hijack the entire process, and he's trying to hijack the narrative, which he is actually starting to do. That's starting to happen, and that's, I told you, and we talked about this, is that that's the concern. If you give this guy too much time, he'll hijack the narrative and, and paint the picture that these are the Democrats that are just trying to um, basically have retaliation for the loss of 2016 election. You know, I saw the letter they wrote about uh, Giuliani, why Giuliani was not going to show up or share any documents. And it was, it was puerile. It was just something a, a first-year law student would write. And he just threw every objection in the book in there, and none of them made sense. They were all, you know, a, a, a crock. And uh, that's what he said in defense of his um, contempt of Congress. Yep. My own view, by the way, just a footnote <clears throat> to this, my own view is that Congress has the power to hold somebody in contempt and, um, and one of the sanctions for that is to fine that person, a money fine. Doesn't have to be a criminal fine, I think it could be a, a civil fine too. And if they fine these guys like big bucks, that will, that will sober them up somehow because that fine will last longer you know, than their time in office. <laughs> a lot of them are gonna go sooner. And arguably, it's not something they can be pardoned for. Yeah. You know, it seems to me that the Republicans, the Republicans get away with these kind of stern um, maneuvers, if you will. Um, when the Democrats try it, it's they're, you know, they just don't pull it off or they don't want to pull it off. Um, I think your, your comments are right on, right on tune. If they refuse subpoenas for the documents or they refuse the, uh, the testimonies uh, in front of the committees, yeah, they're fining them. Yeah. Yeah, well, don't, don't waste your time. Right now, they're, they're taking these ridiculous positions. They say that the whole thing is unconstitutional. That's what they say. I mean, it, it's like throwing it on the wall and seeing yeah. if it sticks. Well, let's talk about, just for a second, how many people are actually being, will either come forward or have already refused to come forward or have already testified. Yeah, please. Um, you know, we're talking about Mike Pence now. Um, you know, his, his involvement in this is, is starting to get into the airwaves, and uh, there'll be a question whether or not um, those documents are going to be supplied by Mike Pence. Mm -hmm. doesn't look like it's going to be. 
Um, oh, I'm sure it's not. That's the, you know, uh, Trump has instructed them all not to yeah. participate. Mark Esper, Defense Secretary. We have Russ, uh, Russ Voigt, who is the Office of Management and Budget. There's some documents that I'm sure he's sitting on that uh, the committees would like to see. We have Rick Perry. We have, um, well, first off, before we talk about Rick Perry, Mick Mulvaney's name is starting to creep out now as he, back in May of 2019, started to orchestrate um, Rick Perry. He's a very and, important man, Mulvaney. Yeah, he's Kurt a, Volker. He's the chief of staff. Yeah, he's that, yeah. Kurt Volker and uh, Gordon Sutherland, um, the three that actually were put on detail for the Ukraine back channel communications. Well, you know, what this tells you is that everyone around him was involved in this initiative. It was no small thing. You know, he had everybody on his team was directed at, at forcing the Ukraine to lay some dirt on Biden. Everyone. In 1974, the title of the movie was All the President's Men. Yeah. The reality of what's happening now, it's All the President's Henchmen. Yeah, yeah. it's true. They're all, they're all doing their part. They're loyal, loyal duty to do whatever the president has asked them to do behind closed doors. And they, they enacted it. History will not judge them <clears throat> kindly. Okay, so we did have a couple of witnesses. So uh, who were they and what did they say, that, as far as we know? Well, um, we have, let's see, what, 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 what did we have? Yovanovich, we had the former Yovan ambassador Maria to Ukraine. Yovanovitch. Yeah, she, uh, she came forward. And, you know, a lot of them are saying, we don't care what your advice is to us. We don't care, you know, about your attorneys, you know, either accompanying us to these or, or telling us not to show up. We're going anyway. So there's a lot of courage. There's a profile in courage. For, for the ambassador. They go down well in history. And um, I'm losing her name. Um, she was an aide, and she spent nine, ten hours in front Hill. of... Hill. Hill, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Fiona Hill. Fiona Hill. And uh, what a profile and courage she is. And she's telling it like it is. Yeah. And, you know, at some point, the floodgates can't be held back. And well, we don't know exactly what they said. It'll be interesting. And he's complaining he doesn't have a chance to cross-examine them. He doesn't have a right to cross-examine them. This is an investigation, not a trial. Again, the remember, trial comes later. he gets to make it up. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is like the grand jury indictment. They can do that in private. Uh, what, you know, I find interesting is that he's trying to use this as a way to, you know, derogate uh, the whole process. But where's the stand-up to this? Where's the stand-up to say, hey, you know, you're just talking out of your, your out side of your mouth. Because you can't do that. I'm not hearing that. So what he's saying is actually catching traction. Yeah, and among, that's, among his base, anyway. I mean, the knowledgeable people know that he, you know, that Congress can and will and should do this. Uh, that the House can do this. And, uh, you know, they, they know, they should know, that he's just doing fake the way he always does. And he's lying one day after another. Um, but you're right. Some people buy it. Some people go along with it. A number of senators, Republican senators, have gone along with it, and they've repeated this, and it just demonstrates how ignorant they are. Well, let's talk a little bit about what behind the scenes um, Giuliani's been up to. I mean, he's doing more. I never said that. Um, now he's back into firmly as I'm the president's attorney, acting in this capacity. And, and he himself has an attorney. He, I think he just let him go. Was oh, that right? Yeah, I think he just said, I don't need him anymore. It was that attorney that wrote the letter that yeah, I Yeah, I don't need about. him because I'm not testifying. <laughs> what great logic is that? I'm in legal peril for contempt of Congress, potentially. And I don't need an attorney because I'm not showing up. He, he, now, there's a sound thinking board. The lawyer, by the way, yeah. um, is uh, practicing out of Florida, Miami, I think. Right. <laughs> Sounds like somebody Trump might know. <laughs> you mean one of the holdovers from uh, Mar-a-Lago? <laughs> right. You never know. So, you know, I mean, the old adage, when you're in a hole, stop digging. And they just continue to dig. And they so, are. They're making it worse. And, and this is clear obstruction now. And, uh, I'm, and I'm thinking that there's no question there's going to be an article there in the, the articles of impeachment that include obstruction. And we have examples of it every day. So um, the, the only question we should just discuss on this notion, the other question, is, um, is uh, timing. Everybody says, oh, well, maybe by Thanksgiving, mm, maybe by Christmas, mm, maybe by the end of the year. As far as I'm concerned, this has got to go happen right now. 
Now, one of the questions put in the debate Before last Thanksgiving. night, is there enough evidence right now to impeach him? And the answer is probably yes. Yeah. Well, I think they want to dot their I's, cross their T's, and, and actually lay out enough testimony, very succinct, if they get you know, too verbose on this, it's going to be a nightmare. People won't get their arms around it. Um, but I think they want to put out very succinct statements from all these witnesses and let that be part of the record before the vote is taken. You can overdo this. You sure can, and leave it to the Democrats. They will. If you, let, if you give them the opportunity, they, they will overdo they this. You've got to get some guys to work all night and, and pull together uh, you know, a memo about it and uh, make articles of impeachment and then put them on the floor. Yeah. I've got to do that soon. I don't know what the big holdup is, because the holdup works in his favor, obviously. And there are a lot of people in the country who feel we should resolve that. I don't agree with them. Uh, that we should resolve this in the election, not in an, an impeachment uh, inquiry. Um, and so the closer you get to the election, the more emboldened those people, the more support those people will have, you know, for the argument that we should wait till the... Uh, but in fact, this is a, it's a judicial matter. It's a matter for the House well, under the Constitution. They have to act. They should act right now. Well, we've, we've argued this point on Trump Week for months now. You know, how far do you get into the election year and you're still talking about this stuff? And to what degree do they say, see, it's a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt. They're just trying to, you know, have me lose on the ratings and, and lose my voter base. <clears throat> and, and they'll play right into that narrative. They'll yeah. play right into it. One of, the, one of the big failures of the Mueller investigation was it took too long and it came out to be a nothing burger. And he was diffident. He, he just never really addressed it. Well, I don't think it was a nothing burger. I think there was 10 salient points on obstruction. Yeah. Um, yeah. They just couldn't get their arms around it. Right. It was too convoluted, too complex, too long. Too much time went Yeah, by. and Mueller didn't wrap it up in a, a nice, clean bow, you know, right. in a package. He right. didn't do it. Right. So that way it doesn't count. I mean, it counts maybe, you know, in terms of it'll your perception. It'll be a side note now. It'll, it'll, be, a, it'll be an asterisk term. somewhere on a page on, yeah. on these articles. What counts is, is uh, what's coming out right now, and all these witnesses are supporting it. And I suppose maybe there's one more round of witnesses after the witnesses this week, but then they got to stop. They got enough. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see. Um, again, getting back to Giuliani, the, the two guys that can't shoot straight is how they're being described in the media. Um, Igor oh, Furman <laughs> and Lev Parnas. There's a third one. He was arrested in Washington yesterday. Oh, I, did, I didn't uh, catch that. Another guy. I think he's Ukrainian also. Oh. And he, was, he was consorting and conspiring with those two that were arrested last week. They have Giuliani palling around with a guy named Igor. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, Giuliani is into it up to his eyeballs. Remember, he got $500,000. Is it 500000 uh, from these two guys arrested at the airport? Um, his company, so to speak. And that had to be money that went back to Trump. That was payoff of some kind. Yeah, remember that was he a one-way ticket. He was ticket. the bag man yeah. for a payoff back to Trump, um, you know, um, having to do with Trump's uh, efforts, Trump's uh, release of the, of the military, uh, you know, military money yeah. to Ukraine. The support, I mean, yeah. it was all kinds of stuff going on. But this gets into what we're talking about. If you fall down too many rabbit holes, um, the maze, if you will, gets too complex and people lose interest, they can't follow the maze. So, I mean, it was almost like back in the 70s, you know, with Nixon and, you know, the, the plumbers, remember the plumbers that broke in, and you yeah. had all these, yeah. the finance guys, uh, yeah. Rebozo, and you had them all out there, you know, and it was hard to follow it. Yeah, so they got to move. They got to move. They got to move. They, yeah. can't, they can't let uh, Trump uh, command the agenda. But, uh, now, but Trump tried to command the agenda over this past weekend mm -hmm. with his... Uh, with his um, move on Syria and mm -hmm. Turkey and the, and the Kurds, which was, uh, I, I suppose he tried to do that to get into the headlines. He tried to do that to change the subject. That's what he does. That's his MO. You and I have talked about that many times. But this was a horrendous mistake. You know, it was just one tweet and he ruined the Middle East. And it's irreconcilable now. It's, it's unfixable. It's done. Yeah. It's, it's... It's done. It's done. We're out. Well, we're almost out. And, you know, he's, he's sending <clears throat> Pence over there. I think Pompeo is going, too. They're all going. To, they're trying to uh, impose on uh, uh, Erdogan, uh, Erdogan uh, to have him stop, you know, these uh, incursions into, uh, into Syria and the killing of the, um, of the Kurds. They're going to try to get him to stop. And he's saying, nope, it's a I don't fool's buy mission. that. I reject that Yeah, completely. it's a fool's mission. I mean, it's a waste of time. Yeah, yeah it's a waste of time. They're going over there... It's a waste of time. It's, a, it's visible. And if he really cared, he'd go over there himself. I have a feeling, though, he's been trying to call 
Erdogan, and Erdogan's not taking his calls. I have a funny you know? feeling you're right. Yeah. So he's sending these guys in order to direct some But this is a heck of a attention. way. I mean, of all the distractions that you and I were talking about and trying to predict, with Venezuela or, you know, all these different avenues for distraction, who would imagine, as Lindy, Lindsey Graham has just recently um, stated, this will be his worst mistake of his presidency? It is. No question, because it destabilizes the whole region. Um, so, it, you know, A, <clears throat> it kills the Kurds, thousands of them right now as we speak. That's incredible because they're our allies and they were into this with our blessing, with our help, with our promise. And, and there, were, there was footage yesterday on the tube. As the Americans were leaving, they were hugging the Kurds. And it's so sad, leaving them to be killed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trump. <clears throat> That's, so the Kurds are a sad story. And you had a quote about the Kurds. Uh, well, I did because... Trump is trying to defend his action against the Kurds. Well, first off, let's go back a little bit of the time when this first came out. First, he said, I'm not abandoning the Kurds. That was one of his initial statements mm -hmm. when this you know, started to take flack. I'm not abandoning the Kurds. Well, okay, he's way past that statement. Then he said, um, well, you know what? I was reading an article and... You know, the Kurds really never did help us in World War II or in Normandy on uh, the beach landing. Okay, so that was kind of like his next statement about the Kurds. Yeah. Well, as of today, uh, the Kurds are... stupid remark. All, all, all of them are. <laughs> which one, okay. which right. one isn't? Let's keep going. Okay, let's keep going. The Kurds are no angels. And here's the one that really kind of got me on this one. The Kurds are no angels. Take a look at the PPK. Now, the PPK is kind of their... Um, you know, they've been, uh, you know, fighting the Turks. They want, you know, they're kind of more of the extremists yeah, of the that's, Kurds. That's what Erdogan wants to stop and kill, but he's killing yeah, but civilians. He, here, here, in one sentence, really, Donald Trump has taken 20 to 25 million Kurds, and he's lumped them all in one sentence as the PPK. How convenient. Mm, yeah. So therefore, if they get slaughtered, well, they're terrorists. They're extremists. Yeah, they're not angels. Now, see how Trump does that with, a, with the, the ease and grace of a magician? Yeah, and then he, and then he made some statement. I, I think it was about the Syrians, but it was about one of the groups that, that's involved. He said, he said, they like war. They're always involved. They've been oh, fighting yeah. for years and years. We don't like war. They like war. Yeah. They, uh, they like to be killed. We don't. Well, like he compared to it to has been. It's they've been fighting for many years, like Palestine, the Palestinians and the Israelis. So that was a quote this morning. And then they've been fighting for a thousand years. So therefore, it's okay for us it's to just okay. give up so on we our. Ba we back out of the situation. Yeah. Uh, we let it all fold in on itself, and we let them continue to fight. Well, let genocide they occur like because fight. they've been doing it for a thousand years anyway. So let them kill each other. That's basically yeah, that's what he what said this is. morning, as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's, not, it's not like that, though, because, you know, the Syrians, this, what he did gives the Syrians an open, an open road to, to the border, actually, to Turkey. Um, what he did um, builds a, a relationship between the Syrians, builds the existing relationship between Syria and Russia, who would love to make us fools, Putin. It builds a relationship between Turkey and Russia, Russia wins. It becomes the, the, the honest broker we, sh we should have been. He just weakened NATO. Okay. Um, and, of course, Iran comes out yeah. ahead because yeah. Iran is involved. So, it, you know, he's destabilizing all these people, and he is paying homage to Russia. Mm -hmm. and, and this, you know, it's funny that every time you look, he's doing something that favors Russia. Russia. Yeah. The guy has a thing about Russia, and you wonder what Russia has on him. Because every move he makes, it benefits Russia. That question has been asked for the last three years. Yeah. What does Russia have on Donald Trump? Yeah. And again, it pops up. You know, in any um, event, he's losing a lot of yeah, support in, in Congress, uh, in, in, in the Republican side of Congress, and, uh, and I think in the country, too, because you can't, you can't well, justify what he did. There are reports that the, Republic, the Republicans in the Senate are starting to back down on that, the criticism. I mean, Go they're figure. not criticizing. Yeah, they're, they're starting to soften their tone. You know, I mean. Well, that's because he's working day and night to, to talk to the them, phones. bring yeah. them in, to make a telephone call, whatnot. Yeah. And, um, you know, it has an effect on them. The power of his personality. Well. And, and who knows, the cult of his personality seems to be taking hold again. As it has. As it has. As and it, it has. Obviously, you know, they're starting to back down from this criticism. Yeah. Um, this before we end on this topic, I just want to throw out a couple of quotes that, again, it just shows 
how out of touch he is with humanity and how obtuse he is as he looks at the world and how he just, just by himself will pull out of you know, these important regions of the world. You know, one single phone call over the weekend. Um, he was asked about you know, this, this thing about p putting a knife in the Kurds back and the United States was, basically has done that. He said, well, you know what? No American soldiers have been killed. You know why that happened? He said, that's why it goes. That's just the way it goes. That's the way it is. We're the boss. Really? So when there's, when there's pointed criticism, and not only just Democratic criticism, but also the Republicans, about how this looks bad, how this compromises our allegiances with Europeans around the world, and you know, these are pointed criticisms, and his only response is, that's just the way it is. We're the boss. Now, that's an argument from a three-year-old, well, a five-year-old, a five-year-old. And that, he seems to get away with this, this well, explanation. People, people buy it. I swear to God, it's amazing to find they buy it. And, and his base is still apparently rock solid, even after this huge gaffe. So and at the same time, lest we not forget that he's still wrecking the environment. He's wrecking our immigration policy. He's abandoned, um, you know, uh, Hong Kong, the democracy in Hong Kong. The, the Congress, the House passed a bill uh, making it's not going to pass to the Senate, but making, a, uh, making it illegal to um, you know, oppose the Hong Kong protests or something like that. And um, that's not going to get through. But he hasn't done anything about it. He hasn't done anything about Venezuela. He hasn't done anything about North Korea. Yep. He hasn't made a deal. I, you know, I got a piece coming on called The Art of the Non-Deal, Tim. Because, in fact, he hasn't made a deal about anything. Yeah. There's no deal. He just he's keeps only throwing unraveled them up in the air. Yeah. deals. Yeah. Whatever deal you can think we had before, he's unraveled it. So the art of the non-deal is in full play, uh, and his attack on the environment, denial of climate change is all incredible how negative it is, and his racial bigotry has, has poisoned the country. Um, so we can't forget that, because that still goes on. We forgot one item, the wall. In fact, just recently, both the House and the Senate, bipartisan effort, um, passed Asked the bill to say there is no emergency, and he vetoed that, and now there won't be enough votes to overwrite his veto. But they did take another pass at it, saying there is no national emergency at the southern border. Yeah. There's a national emergency in the Middle East. Yeah. Though. He can create one like that. So <laughs> there it one is. tweet. There it is. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's talk about, let's see, let's talk about um, the, the, the debate last night. Uh, the, 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 I guess you'd call it the October debate. There'll be another one in November, right. and, and every month thereafter. Well, it looked like every previous month. There's 12 people on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, you know, I, I mean, the Times had an interesting report ranking how well they did last night, and Elizabeth Warren seemed to come out first. Um, and some others were successful. Uh, I, I, uh, I remember uh, Amy uh, Klobuchar, which she was successful. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Buttig Buttigieg was successful. Um, I, don't, I don't know how uh, Sanders is doing. Uh, yeah. He's up there. Uh, and Biden is up there. But Biden, Biden doesn't sound like a president. Uh, it's, it's not going to happen. He's, 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 he's somehow, losing his luster. He's losing his luster. Yeah, he really is. And so and what it tells us, I think, is that things are changing, and they are going to change. And we really don't know that Elizabeth Warren is going to be the candidate. Yeah. We don't know. Uh, I think the, the people at the, at the far ends, uh, Pulsey's an example, and uh, a couple of others, they're going to go away. Well, I think she did put a nail in our coffin last night, mm. Pulsey Gabbard. How? Well, she basically kept saying this was all about regime change. You know, this going into Syria and backing up the Kurds was about regime change. And it wasn't. It was about basically... Fighting ISIS. She's got a very odd view of things. Yeah, she does. And I think she got hit hard enough by Buttigieg that basically I think that took her out of the running because clearly her, her repeated statements, I think it was like nine times during the night, um, she kept harping on regime change. And clearly she doesn't either know or she wants to ignore the fact that this was not about that. It was about taking on ISIS and having a partnership with the Kurds to do that. I think Harris is out. Harris, I, I had high hopes for Harris, but I, I think she's out. Press was not kind to her either. She mm -hmm. did not rate her very high. So the question is whether Elizabeth Warren is going to stay in first position. And I'm not sure that she is. 
Elizabeth Warren, by the way, um, wrote a tweet over the weekend um, supporting the protesters on Mauna Kea. I thought it was really uninformed. Uh, what does she know about it? Uh, well, it's the underdog uh, issue, and politicians love to glom onto an underdog issue. Yeah. That's, that's getting some airtime in the papers and the news, yeah. you know, the newscasts, and it's just a popular thing to, to you know, attach yourself to. And what we need is a, a, another candidate, I think, because none of, I don't believe any of these guys can beat Trump. Um, and uh, I mean, right now, right now, assuming he doesn't get impeached, um, and that's a good assumption given the, the Senate. Um, so what came out a few days ago was that Bloomberg, that's, that's, yeah. Michael Bloomberg, former mayor of New He's York. He's floating a balloon, isn't he? Huh? He's floating a balloon. He is. And uh, if uh, Biden drops out, and Biden may, because Biden seems weak and un, undetermined somehow, um, the Bloomberg said he would come in. And uh, he would be a very interesting candidate in that field. And you could say about him more than the others, really, honestly, at least from what we know of him, um, that he could beat Trump. Yeah. He would be the proverbial dark horse candidate. Yeah. Um, but at some point, it's too late. Um, so when does he make that decision? You know, hopefully if he does, it's before Thanksgiving because... I don't know when the deadline is. It probably isn't yeah. until next year to file papers. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, he, he has a certain amount of name recognition in the Northeast. I'm not sure he has national name recognition. Right. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen uh, this week, Tim? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's complex. There's a lot of oysters in the stew here. <laughs> <laughs> not enough potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I really I worry about the country. Um, I worry that these debates are not they're not really presenting a candidate that you want to that you want to vote for. Um, I I worry about Trump getting away with it. I worry about the loss of synergy. Yeah. And you know, it, it's just again, if they let too much time go, the synergy's lost. The air, yeah. the air out of the balloon is gone. Yeah. And that that concerns me because this this needs to be followed up and rather quickly. Yeah. 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 The stakes are so high. Do you think Nancy's going to go past Thanksgiving on this? I do. You do? Do I think she's going to delay it until after Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yes. Wow. I do. That would be tragic. I think she's as much as said that. So, this is a big problem. Yeah. And so if he gets the chance to do the agenda, he'll come up with another Syria. He'll try to make something good out of something bad. Um, he'll, he'll attack somebody or get involved in a name-calling contest. He'll find some dirt on any one of those candidates or on Nancy. And before you know it, you know, he'll, he'll have the agenda again. You mean the bright and shiny object? Yeah, and the media, you know, will follow, follow, will follow that. Yeah. And uh, gee whiz, you know, but you and I, we'll, we'll see it clearly, right? We, we strive to. <laughs> we, we persevere to endure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Trump Week. Trump we'll Week. Be back we'll next week with more. Aloha. Aloha.